it's an absolute privilege to be uh, part of this this National Science Week and in partnering with QUT. Uh, so it's I can only uh, stress how how proud I am to be a part of the Great Barrier Reef community and looking after it. Um, I'm just going to share my screen because I think it's prettier looking at what I've got on there than myself. Um, two seconds there. Right, and I hope you can and can see that. Uh, before before I, um, I think Angela's given me about five minutes to talk, and most of the panelists who know me think will know that's going to be a hard ask for me to stick to five minutes. But before I do talk a little bit about uh, Reef Teach and the prize that um, we have on offer, I do want to also acknowledge the traditional owners of the the Great Barrier Reef area and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and the continued connection to land, sea and community. Uh, a culture such as the uh, Indigenous Australians have been living in balance with the Great Barrier for 60,000 years, and that's unparalleled anywhere else in the world, and that certainly has to be acknowledged. And so I do want to acknowledge them and their contribution and, and learn from them. Now, myself, um, some of you might be hearing, I, I don't have a very strong Australian accent. I'm actually a South African-born um, reef enthusiast. I remember sitting at my, my desk back in South Africa studying for my zoology degree, and I had a picture of Green Island at the top of my desk just above me as, a, as an all-star saying, one day I hope to just visit the Great Barrier Reef once. I now live on the Great Barrier Reef. Um, I've spent over 3,000 days on the Great Barrier Reef in my time here. I've given talks to over 100,000 people. And as, a, as another hat, I'm also a skipper and a marine engineer, and I've skippered many of the vessels that the tourists uh, go out on, and I've taken nearly 3 million people personally to the Great Barrier Reef. And that's one of the things that truly inspires me between a partnership between science and tourism is how we can share and showcase, present a world heritage area such as the Great Barrier Reef. And in 2018, I was given the privilege and opportunity to become one of the first ever master reef guides. And now I'm proud to be a community of uh, 82 master reef guides throughout the Great Barrier Reef. It's a, a program that's not seen anywhere else in the world on a coral reef system. This is recognizing people who spent a lot of time on the reef and the master reef guide program, which is run by the, the tourism industry peak body, the Association of Marine Park Tourism Operators, the Queensland Tourism um, Agency, Tropical Events uh, Queensland, excuse me, Tourism Events Queensland, and the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, which is the uh, federal government body mandated to look after the Great Barrier Reef, which is a great partnership between science, management, industry, and um, the public. But most importantly, part of that program, we, we partner with a lot of researchers. So as master reef guides, we can give up-to-date, accurate, balanced information to the public who visit the World Heritage Great Barrier Reef and showcase this amazing reef. And that kind of ties in where Reef Teach comes into it. Reef Teach, our little business based in Cairns, um, we, we kind of pitch it as it's a, research, it's a research and education platform for gathering and sharing information on the Great Barrier Reef within the tourism sector. We were born out of a demand from people wanting to know more about the reef. We're about to visit it, and it's so complex and so diverse, they wanted to understand it more. And that's how we've grown, into delivering talks to the public before they head out to the Great Barrier Reef, and then growing eventually to doing our research, partnering with Australian Institute of Marine Science, partnering with the Marine Park Authority in these uh, citizen science programs, such as the Virtual Reef Diver. Reef Teach is a very small team. There's three of us that actually uh, run there, but we have a whole bunch of interns that join us at different times of years. In COVID, those interns are a little bit further and uh, apart, but this is where you as um, competing in the Virtual Reef Diver Challenge can become part of our team for a week, and we'd love to welcome you back. And to give you a bit of a sense of what we we love to do uh, is, is all, all getting in the water. We work with uh, the Marine Park authorities, collecting data with the eye in the reef. Some of my favourite stories out on the Great Barrier, and what truly inspires me about the Great Barrier, 
is its diversity. It's one of, if not the most diverse habitat on the planet. It is so complex. It's not just made up of corals. Mind you, corals are mind blowing. There's 14 key habitats. Um, it ends up creating 70 unique marine bioregions. That's almost like Australia having 70 different states and territories. Now, every one of these 70 unique bioregions has their own unique characteristics, their own weaknesses, their own strengths, and they all work together to make this ecosystem that is larger than two thirds of the countries on our planet come together in what is a precious natural treasure to humanity. To humanity. And we want you to be part of that, to come out with us as a Reef Teach um, to, uh, uh, honorary staff member for up to five days, learning about the reef ecology, participating in, in our citizen science programs, such as the virtual reef diver, then actually analyzing the data so you can visit the reef, give back to it and understand it more. And that's where our, our logo, our motto comes from. With learning comes appreciation. The more you know, the more you understand, the more difference you are going to make to that reef. So we welcome you here. I want to share some of my favorite stories. Um, two of them were as a skipper. Turtles are one of the most iconic organisms, animals on, on the Great Barrier, in fact, in the ocean. There's seven species on the planet. Great Barrier is home to six of them. And it's one of those sought after uh, animals that everybody wants to see. And over, over 5,000 dollars on the Great Barrier, I still get excited like a kid on Christmas. I remember one day pulling a vessel up to the reef and just as we we're about to um, secure the vessel to one of the mooring lines, this baby green turtle, no bigger than a, a side plate, a dinner plate size, was sitting right next to the boy that floats the mooring line. It had never seen a boat or people before. And as we sat there with this 25 meter vessel, uh, 50 meters away from it, it was just as intrigued with us as, it, as we were with it. And after a wait, being patient of 15 minutes, hoping the turtle would move away so we can secure the vessel to the mooring site, it wouldn't move. We actually had to send in a crew member to very gently, and I don't encourage everyone to do this, very gently persuade the turtle to move away. And it spent the whole day with us just watching us as much as we were watching it. And it was one of those poignant moments in my experience in the Great Barrier Reef where people were showing animals respect by not crowding and hounding and trying to grab it. And the turtle was doing the same back to us. It was such a true pristine experience. And this is what we want people to actually also experience by coming out. Another one was, um, I have a young son who's eight years old. And I said to him when I was preparing to talk to you this evening, what do you want to talk about? He says, talk about that whale next to the boat, dad. And, I, and so my background is historically, I started off with um, corals back in the 90s, looking at how we can protect the coral reefs of South Africa. And I was eventually invited to move to work with um, humpback whales in South Africa. And I fell in love with humpback whales. And with our amazing humpback whale seasons we see in the marine park, the one day we're heading out to the reef and we saw a humpback whale in the distance, slowed down, watch where it went, it sounded under the water and it disappeared. And as the skipper, we thought, no, nah, it's all gone. The next thing, a passenger on the vessel screamed in, in uh, elation. The whale was right at the back of the boat. It had, the boat has two hulls and the whale was sitting in between it. And what actually excited me the most, this was the first time my son, he would have been about four or five, had ever seen a whale that close and in that much detail. And the look on his face just showed what the importance is of the Great Barrier Reef to the world. And, this, and these are the kind of experiences through citizen science, engaging people with the reef, taking them out to world heritage, showing them those uh, universal values. We can get people to fall in love with the reef through understanding and actually connecting with nature. And that's the most important. And so those are some very cool experiences. But I also wanted to touch on some of my favorite creatures. There's, there are so many animals to talk about, but one animal that I really, really love talking about, it was, it was actually the animal I spoke about in my interview to become a master reef guard, and that's the most unassuming animal called the sea cucumber. Now, I love the sea cucumber for a number of reasons. One, it's very unassuming, but it's got a very important role. Most people just swim over it. I have likened it to the recyclers of the ocean. 
sea cucumbers sit on the bottom. They relate it to the starfish. Right? But what they do, they suck up sand, taking all the rotting organic matter, and they recycle it back into the food chain to maintain the nutrient balances or the start of the nutrient balances of the reef. But they have such a critical role to the reef, and they just not noticed and i want to draw people's attention to them because they play such an important role they can actually be quite beautiful when you when you see them but also to highlight that their actual life is spent with their face in the sand sucking up the proverbial number twos of everyone else sitting to the sea floor but for the sea cucumber it actually gets a bit tougher all right sea cucumbers actually have their their breathing apparatus in their bums and as a result, they actually have a fish that lives up, lives up their bum too, called the pearl fish. And this is, this is a great character to introduce us to how diverse, special, and unique the reef is. That there's an animal whose role is to maintain, be part of maintaining nutrient balance by uh, sucking up the proverbial number twos of everyone. It has a fish that lives up its bottom and it breathes through its bottom. And there's so many more of these stories out there, and we want to share that with you guys. And that's what uh, we want to share. So we encourage you guys to take part of this challenge, uh, win the challenge, and come join us uh, on, on the Great Barrier Reef as the prize winner. We can't wait to have you. We can't wait to share the reef with you. And I look forward to meeting you. And I gave you a little sneak peek. This is one of the, the new toys we have which is a little drone that we use to try showcase the reef uh, to the people. And we, we've got it working again now, and we want you to come have a go and a play with it. So thank you very much for, for listening to me, and I hope to see you guys soon up in Cairns and on the Great Barrier Reef.